Thanks you guys for watching and take it easy. Uh, Bangle again here coming back at you with another video. Today we're doing the rebuild of the Kansas City Chiefs. Very interesting team here. They pretty much start out hot every season and then uh, fade away like Kobe in the fourth. Top three players, Travis Kelsey, Justin Houston, Eric Berry. Justin Houston, Eric Berry, somewhat injury prone, uh, you could say. But basically, fantasy style rebuild. We're going to take this team back to the glory days with Len Dawson, uh, I guess. <laughs> there aren't really any Kansas City Chiefs of glory days, I'd say. But we're going to get this team on the, uh, on the right tracks, going in the right direction. Any means necessary. So uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. So we look, we look at the team here, and a uh, number of things must be said. Alex Smith is not the future of the Kansas City Chiefs. I know he has started off with an MVP caliber season in this power run heavy, I guess you could say, not even power run, but this run heavy Kansas City Chiefs offense. The former number one overall pick out of Utah. Uh, by the San Francisco 49ers. Alex Smith is not our guy. Here he is, Patty Mahomes. Out of Texas Tech. Great guy. Has a gem of an arm. And, um, you know, pretty mobile in that air raid system at Texas Tech. Even, even that made it a couple, and more than a couple, but made some amazing plays there. He is the future of the Chiefs. And, um, yeah, I got to trade away Alex Smith. Anyway, we're just going to make these moves, and uh, you guys will see as we uh, as we make them. With my first trade, I'm trading Spencer Ware, Derek Johnson, hook him horns. It's mandatory, needs to be said. And a third-round pick for DeForest Buckner. Fantastic young defensive tackle from the San Francisco 49ers. Derek Johnson, just way too old. Spencer Ware is now un unnecessary with the emergence of Kareem Hunt. And DeForest Buckner will help out the defensive line. I didn't really go over the defense much at all. Um, but, I mean, I'll, we'll pretty much talk about it in a minute. DeForest Buckner is a major upgrade. He's going to play nose tackle, and I can now trade Benny Logan, or even move him to left end, but I'll probably try to trade Alan Bailey as well. Chris Jones is an absolute monster, but we need to improve at that second level with the linebackers because Tom Bahali is just way too old. Really can't have him on the team anymore. All right, pretty big trade. Benny Logan D Ford and a second round pick for JJ Watt. I do want more picks because we pretty much have none. Didn't have a first round. You can thank Patrick Mahomes for that. Patty Mahomes. Um, but the defensive line is really starting to come together with the addition of JJ Watt. Already have Chris Jones. The 3 4 is coming together really nice. I'd like to trade Tom Bahali. I wanted to last time, but the only way it would work is if I traded D Ford. So had to make that move. This is a 3-4 defense, and we're definitely going to change to that. I mean, I could play this as a 4-3, um, and I, I might actually just have to do that. Move Justin Houston down to left end. J.J. Watt can still play end. I might be Justin Houston to the other side, and then Chris Jones to uh, defensive tackle. That could work really, really well. I actually might do that. Yeah, let's do that. All right, this trade is Tom Bahali, Kevin Pierre-Lewis, and a sixth next year for the first round pick from the New York Giants. That pick probably should be very, uh, fairly valuable as uh, the Giants suck a lot. Go Giants, they're my favorite team. All right, this trade is Alex Smith, Mitchell Schwartz, and Mitchell Morse. Mitch Morse. Um, that's a very interesting combo of names. For a one and a two from the Jets. Now, I know that Mitchell Schwartz is a decent amount of value to give up, but he is 28 regression hits around that time, so he's not gonna be all that valuable to me. Um, down the long run, he was never going to be the long-term starting right tackle, unfortunately. Uh, even though I think he's a tremendous player in real life. And, um, honestly, neither was Mitch Morse at only a 75 overall. No quick development trait. Zach Fulton is decent looking. We'll see how he develops over the course of this season. Eric Fisher's a disaster. Need to get him off the team. He never lived up to his first overall pick hype. So, we need to trade him question is who, who do we pick up what positions do we go after I'm thinking about giving uh, Pat Mahomes some more receiving options because Albert Wilson Chris Conley it was Demarcus Robinson of Florida yeah they're not 
they're not exactly ideal for what I want to do here. Maybe we attack that position in the draft. I'm not really sure yet. But, um, yeah, we worked on defense a lot so far. And I'm not willing to necessarily abandon that. But the offense is really important as well. This next trade is Ron Parker, Jarvis Jenkins, and a future third. For the first overall projected pick from the Browns, I like to go after that pick because it's generally a pick uh, that has quite a lot of value. So I think we might be set on first rounders with three. I think more... <laughs> more than set if uh if those end up being really good picks for us in terms of what we can turn those into whether it's either players or actual really talented draft picks i almost think i am out of trade value completely actually i can probably trade alan bailey eric fisher um but beyond that i think we're pretty much set here i know i took apart this team but i don't think it's set up to win this year so i figured might as well take it down tear it down before we build it up completely Eric Fisher and a future five is going to get me a three from the Jets. And now Ellen Bailey, I'm trying to get, you know, a draft pick for him as well. And uh, probably around the same. Nope, oh, that worked. <coughs> Classic choke on air there. Uh, as I still am sick. That could have something to do with it. Ellen Bailey for a third. Wow, that's accepted really easily. All right. All right, this is the team for season number one. It really isn't set up to win. Pat Mahomes would really have to put the team on his back, which isn't impossible, just probably unlikely. Defensively, I think we're looking really, really solid. There are positions that don't look as solid. Like, you know, cornerback is one that I would look at, but mainly free safety and pretty much the entire linebacking core. Reggie Ragland, I think, is awesome. I loved him at Alabama. Hopefully, he has a really good career. Hasn't really shown much. It was injured on the Bills and traded. He hasn't done too much. I haven't watched him. I haven't seen enough Chiefs games this year, to be fair. Um, but I think it's a solid team. It's one that's not set up to win this year. But I think year two is going to be really successful. If Pat Mahomes can win Rookie of the Year, we're going to be set up for the entire thing. If not, a little bit more work to do. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. I will see you guys there. All right, midseason mark. Three and five. Anthony Sherman is our top free agent. We are sitting at the very bottom of the AFC West, doing a little bit better than I would have expected to be fair to us. Although, I don't really care. I'd rather that... We don't even have our first round pick. I don't even care. Um, Anthony Sherman, I said, is our top guy. I don't want Anthony Sherman. I do want Harrison Butker. He kicks it, but... Kerr. <laughs> Hilarious. All right, that's kind of the only guy I want. And was it Dustin Colquitt? It is Dustin. I kind of want him back, too. Couldn't remember if it was Dustin or Britton for a moment there. Harrison Butker wants a deal, all right. How about you sign a seven-year deal? Pay you one, five, six. <laughs> okay, whatever, we'll talk later. See you guys for the playoffs. All right, didn't make the playoffs, no real surprise there. But we finished five and 11, we'll see how exactly we got there. Interesting season from Patrick Mahomes. 4,000 yards, 21 touchdowns only, but 13 interceptions. Kind of odd. Kareem Hunt, not exactly a killer season for him. 980 yards, 8 touchdowns, 3.7 yards per carry. Tyreek Hill, 88 catches for 1,200 yards, 5 touchdowns, 6 TDs from Travis Kelsey. Blocking. Offensive line doesn't really matter. Wow, Cameron Irving is trash. Reggie Ragland led our team in tackles with 144. Tackles for loss. 22 from J.J. Watt, who only had 6 sacks. 4.5 for Chris Jones with 17 tackles for loss. But 16 sacks from Justin Houston, 13 from DeForest Buckner. Interceptions, we have 4 from Eric Berry and 2 from Frank Zombo. 1 for uh, a number of players. Force fumbles, we have 2 from Terrence Mitchell, Steven Terrell, and Chris Jones. Fumble recoveries, 2 from Steven Terrell. Any defensive touchdowns? Of course not. What about yearly awards? Aaron Rodgers wins MVP. Show me Patrick Mahomes, please. That'd be amazing. ASD Offensive Player of the Year goes to Big Ben Roethlisberger. No Chiefs. Uh, Defensive Player of the Year goes to Melvin Ingram. No Chiefs. Show me Patrick Mahomes. No, it's Deshaun Watts and Patty Mahomes at number four. Kareem Hunt at number five. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Miles Garrett. No Chiefs. All right, so got to renegotiate. I do want Harrison Butker back. Uh, I will increase his deal. 
a little bit, not too much. I mean, he's good, he's good, but um, let's go ahead and offer him that, and he should accept as he does. A lot of free agents. They seem like insignificant players, but if we don't re-sign a lot of these guys, I mean, they're just going to disappear forever, and we'll have a number of holes. Not enough XP. Like, I wanted way more XP, and we just didn't get it. Like, Zach Fulton, it's just his run block's so bad. I don't, I'm not sure he's even worth having. Like, I'd probably just rather start rookies that I draft. Yeah, I think I'm pretty much done. We're going to let all those players go into the free agent pool, and we will be doing some signing of our own, but... You see all these gaps now? No receivers, no offensive linemen. Uh, defensively, though, we should be way better. Yeah, we have a still sick D-line. DeForest Buckner has a ton of points. Secondary stays pretty much the same. We need corners. We need linebackers. Let's go out in free agency and help out some of this process we don't fix in the draft right away. Who's here? Halfbacks. I don't need them at all. Trey Boston. Interesting. I'm not feeling it, though. I really don't want anyone that I'm seeing in free agency. And like I know Zach Fulton, decent player. I'm okay with letting him go. Um, wow, this is just a poor free agent class. I'm just not trying to bring anybody in. Because I'm looking at the big picture. I'm not trying to get filler players in this particular rebuild. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll just see you guys for the draft. Here we are in the draft. We have the third overall pick as well as the 13th and the 21st in the first round. I think we're in business. If there's someone that I really want, I'll take them here, but otherwise I'll probably just trade down. I'm trading down with the Browns, the third overall pick to trade down three spots to six, picking up a second rounder and their future first in the process. I think I want like really two players in this first round and uh, none of them were on the board just there. So I might reach a little bit to get the players that I want right now. And um, I think getting more picks is definitely more valuable. It's not exactly a loaded draft class, unfortunately. We're going to have to make our picks count. All right, this is too good to pass up. Again, fleecing the Browns almost. But not really. I think this is good for both sides. There's no one I really want at this range. So I'm trading down from the sixth overall pick um, with the Browns. to up two second round picks this year and a second next year. You gotta play for the future, and this draft class isn't insane. I know that. No point in reaching on players I don't want. And with this pick, I'm taking Thomas Bynes out of Notre Dame. 6'2", 23 years old. He looks decent. Not insane, he looks decent. I love the A spectacular catch, and then B catch traffic and B catching are nice. Uh, he's quick, he's agile. He's decently fast at a 4'4", 4'40". That's very fast, actually, especially at 6'2". I think he's gonna be a good player. Not someone that looks insane overall-wise, but I think a solid player nonetheless. Here he is, ranked number 16 in the class. We took him at 13. He's actually insane. 79 overall, but 92 speed, 83 route running, 84 catching, 88 acceleration, 85 catching traffic, 93 spectacular catch. Really, really solid player. Pat Mahomes gets himself a really, really good target there at uh, wide receiver number one, debatably. I want to play Tyree Kill in the slot, obviously. This player was too good. No way I let him slip through the cracks. Looks unbelievable. Great top three skills. Blazing fast at 4-3-4. Unbelievable. Here he is, Gregory Holmes out of North Texas. 80 overall quick development, ranked number 14 in the class. We took him at 21, 96 speed with 87 man, 84 zone, 84 press, 93 acceleration. Again, quick development. Very, very solid player here. Gonna be awesome to pair with Marcus Peters as we move on to the second round. Trading this pick down for a future one, I think the Bengals is probably our best shot as they're absolutely terrible. So I'm gonna trade down with uh, the Bengals here to get, actually, no, let's do it with the Broncos. The Broncos are terrible. We'll pick up a one and a three next year from Denver, move down a couple of spots, and then take another wide receiver by the name of, I'm gonna scroll down a bit, Taurus Young out of Nebraska. Fantastic top three skills, blazing fast, 4-3 flat speed, amazingly agile. 5-10 is like small, but it's, I mean, I don't know. I think he can play on the outside with uh, with his abilities. Here he is, slow development, that's unfortunate. But what's not slow is his 97 speed, 86 route running is fantastic, 87 catching, 92 acceleration, 88 catching traffic, 78 spectacular catch, 89 jumping. 
That slow development is very, very unfortunate. But he's a tremendous player other than that. Um, like, he's really, really good. Just the slow development is really tough. Now, I'm between two free safeties. They're supposed to go in the third round. And I think I'm definitely going to let that go. I'm going to trade these two second rounders, I think, for offensive linemen around the NFL. So let's go ahead and do that. And then uh, one of those free safeties is probably going to become a Kansas City Chief um, in the third round. Second round pick gets me Jack Conklin. That's more than I ever could have asked for. So that is fantastic. And now uh, another second round pick. Maybe I'll go for Joel Batonio in my continuing just fleecing of the uh, Cleveland Browns. Second round pick for Joel Batonio it is. Third round pick. Both safeties just went off the board, I think. Um, really expected one of those guys to be a Brown. <laughs> now, they weren't amazing players, but they looked okay. It's unfortunate we don't get to get one of them, but now a third round pick can probably be turned into a... Uh, I don't know. Offensive line? Could, could look for a safety, maybe. All right, two third round picks is gonna get me Malik Hooker, and that is fantastic. Really, really exciting young safety. Love Malik Hooker at Ohio State. Had a great rookie season before injury. He's now gonna be added to the Kansas City Chiefs. Tremendously young player. Injuries are off, so we don't have to worry about that. And let's continue this pretty good draft. Not great, but certainly pretty good. I'm gonna take Harmon Hughes out of Cincinnati in the fourth here, supposed to go in the fifth. Looks solid, B plus press. He'll be a good depth corner, which is what we're looking for here. 70 overall, um, ranked right around where we took him anyway. Play Rex really bad. Awareness should be bad as well. It is. Decent hit power on him. Really, really good run support corner here. I mean, you guys see his attributes. They aren't bad. Just man and zone right around where you'd want them starting off. Just play Rex and awareness really bring down that overall. But um, I think we're in a good spot. He's exactly what we wanted him to be. So I'm... Um, more than happy with that pick. Two more picks. Don't really particularly love Heath Upshaw, but he looks decent. Should be, again, good depth. Um, yeah, he's not great. Uh, 68 overall. Didn't reach on him too badly, but my next pick, I think, should make up for it. He's not, like, again, not a stud. This draft class was pretty dead, if I'm being honest. Uh, but he looked like a decent player. Dex Hunt out of Western Kentucky. Again, go Hilltoppers. Decent top three skills. You wish pass block was higher, but he's really strong, agile. Here he is, Dex Hunt, 75 overall, ranked number 40 in the class. We took him at 165. Uh, probably look to get him in the starting lineup. I think we'll be able to find a slot for him. But that's the end of the draft. I will see you guys for the start of season number two. All right, look what I just found out of South Dakota. Undrafted rookie, Thailand Foster. I was looking for a fullback, and this guy was sitting in here. Superstar development halfback out of South Dakota. Went undrafted. Welcome to the Kansas City Chiefs. That is a that is quite a find. He was just sitting in here. <laughs> Alright. That is far and away the most ridiculous thing I have ever found in free agency. Not to say that I look particularly often. I don't really know why I was looking. I just said, hey, maybe we'll look at undrafted free agents. And um Thailand Foster is absolutely ridiculous. So that's cool. Now I can probably trade Shark Kendrick West. Let's get him up to an 80 overall. Maybe bump up the trade value a little bit. Nope. Okay. All right. This trade is a one and a two and Shark Kendrick West for Telvin Smith of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, of course, of the Kansas City Chiefs. So he's going to slide in very nicely over at right outside linebacker in our 4-3. Still looking for a left outside linebacker to pair with he and Reggie Ragland. As a Dottie Nicholas is not going to work out at that spot at all. Probably going to cut... Darrell Rebus, because there's just no reason for him to be on the team. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and do that. And um, not necessarily looking to upgrade right now at cornerback, but I would like another outside linebacker, and I'd like another lineman. All right, a three and a future four is going to get me Forrest Lamp from the Chargers. Going to work out really nicely because Forrest Lamp is one of those versatile offensive linemen uh, at Western Kentucky. He was a beast. I could definitely play him at tackle. Uh, and I think right tackle, he would slot in very, very nicely. On the opposite side, or on the right side, I should say, of Laurent Duvernay Tardif. Should work out really, really well. As far as slant at right tackle. And this is the team 
looking really nice of course this is a rookie he has a lot of potential very strong so we're kind of banking on that and then um young is definitely going to play the slot i want chris conley at the four but other than that i mean you guys have seen the team gonna sign a backup quarterback too but i will see you guys at the midseason mark is smoking jay available come on dirty dirty sanchez it is all right two and five at the midseason mark uh, don't really know what that's about as the Chargers are five and two. That's a little bit odd, I would say, as uh, Marcus Peters is our top free agent. Who else is there though? Just Demetrius Harris. Is that really it? Next year is going to be a pain in the ass. But Marcus Peters returns nevertheless, and uh, I really got to figure out why we're two and five. I don't think this is a two and five caliber team. I mean, I'm not saying Super Bowl champion year two team. Just saying, like, probably should be better than 2-5. and five. We actually made the playoffs, finishing 10-6. and six. On what planet? How'd we start out so bad? We only beat the Seahawks, but we lost to the Chargers, Steelers, Browns even. Got crushed by the Ravens. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> we turned it around. All right. I uh, don't really know what that's about. But, uh, I mean, it happened. So, we're in the playoffs. How'd you do, Patty? Almost 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns, 18 interceptions. Rushing, Kareem Hunt, 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns. The rookie, Thailand Foster, at 13. Averaging less than 3 per carry. Tyree Kill led our team in catches. Actually, the rookie, Thomas Bynes, tied him. Also tied him in touchdowns for the team lead. Um, although, Tyree Kill had significantly more yards. Travis Kelsey... 770 yards. Taurus Young, the rookie out of Nebraska, had 785 yards. Five receiving touchdowns for him as well. Same with Kareem Hunt. How we do with sacks? Hmm. 31 sacks from that left side of the line. Not great. Defensively, the Reggie Ragland led our team in tackles with 121. Tackles for loss, 27 from J.J. Watt. 12 from DeForest Buckner. 11 from Chris Jones. Sacks, 3 Double-digit sack guys, J.J. Watt, Justin Houston, and Chris Jones. Interceptions, we have three from Telvin Smith, Eric Berry, and Marcus Peters would all lead the team. Force fumbles, three from J.J. Watt, two from a handful of other players. Fumble recoveries, we have two from Reggie Raglan, and then touchdowns. I saw somebody had a safety. We'll check it out. It's J.J. Watt, it's DeForest Buckner, it's Chris Jones, actually. Interesting. Yearly awards, Aaron Rodgers wins MVP. Any Chiefs in there? course not sam bradford and six and ten broncos interesting asc office player of the year is tom brady any chiefs nope defensive player of the year melvin ingram jj watt in there at number three offensive rookie of the year goes to Kaysen samson thomas Bynes in there at two Taurus young at three that's so tough defensive rookie of the year morgan clement of the dolphins any chiefs gregory holmes the cornerback at number five nobody else i'm not sure we started anyone else as a rookie though we do have some XP to use, though. As I don't know how you ended up starting at center. Did Joel Batonio not play the entire season? No, he, he definitely did at left guard. Then did Hunt not? Man, I don't know. I forgot to change these positions. That was a, that was a mistake. All right, this is our team for the Season 2 playoffs. Looks all right. I've changed some positions around. Joel Batonio is going to be our acting center, even though he played offensive tackle in college, then guard in the pros. He's playing center now. He can do it all, clearly. The defensive line is still insane. Cornerbacks are getting better as our rookie Gregory Holmes has played quite well. He's up to an 84 overall. He's got his awareness up. He's good now. Um, who else did I say? Hughes? Was his awareness bad? It's getting up there a little bit. Play reckon awareness are being improved. But um, I think this is a team that maybe doesn't win this year. We had a wild card matchup against the Texans. We might lose this one against Red Hot Deshaun Watson, and we do. But I'm telling you, this was only season two. We still have three, still potentially four, depending on how things go, to make it further in the playoffs and make the Super Bowl. And I think those are very possible outcomes in terms of playoffs and Super Bowl. Super Bowl could definitely happen. Thailand Foster, absolutely need to re-sign him. Craziest backup in the NFL. Undrafted rookie superstar. Free agents, give me some good linebackers, please. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. Whoa. I don't know what we're doing here. Khalil Mack, the sack attack from the silver and black. 
can go from the AFC team in the West that's whack to the Kansas City Chiefs. I sound like a late 80s to early 90s rapper. Terrible. Uh, well, actually, I do, I do like that, but it doesn't matter. Khalil Mack, uh, yeah, we like you can play anywhere. So Alex Smith down to an 85 overall here in free agency. Ooh, Jordan Hicks is here and no offers? Let's just give him a base deal. Jordan Hicks would be fantastic to have out there. Compliment Khalil Mack pretty nicely. Khalil Mack's not a 4-3 outside linebacker, but I'm confident he can play it. And both except no one wanted Jordan Hicks. That's absolutely ridiculous. Oh, yeah, we already had Telvin Smith. All right, well, I mean, Jordan Hicks is fine. And then Khalil Mack is coming with 30K XP. Can't see his progression history and how he got that, but Jesus. Let's make him a 4-3 outside linebacker. This team is absolutely ridiculous now. It's so good. Khalil Mack, I know, like, it's one player, but, like, it took this team from good to the next level just like that. That's the kind of thing that arguably the best defensive player in the league can do to a team. Is he playing in his natural position? No, but we went after him. We upgraded his own coverage to a 70, which is not great, but that's going to be better for him. He's going to do it all. Khalil Mack, oh, what, what an addition to this team. All right, NFL draft. I'm trading up. I am trading up for a player that I want. All right, two first-round picks, picks number 18 and 23, for the seventh overall pick. I feel like that's actually great value um, for what we're trading up for. So here is our selection. Going to be Christian O'Neal out of Ole Miss. Six foot three. Great top three skills. Four, three, six speed. Here we go. Christian O'Neal. Can we get a round of applause? No, it's not necessary. I, I can hear it in my head. It, it's uh, I'm schizophrenia. Uh, 81 overall superstar development. 97 speed, 80 man, 83 zone, 86 press, 96 acceleration. What an absolute monster. 59 hit power, doesn't matter. He's going to be such a good third option at cornerback. He might even start at my number two. I don't even know. All right, Dex Hunt, a two and a future two. Gets me David Bakhtiari from the Green Bay Packers. He's going to help out, play tackle for us. Not sure who's going to be moving where. But when you have such a tremendous offensive lineman that we can pick up, and in Madden it doesn't matter. You can play him anywhere, so why not? Why not pick him up? All right, draft's over. It doesn't matter who we draft, so we're not going to draft anyone. That's my strategy. All right, this is the team. It looks pretty good. Bunch of crazy new additions, including David Bakhtiari, that rookie superstar cornerback that's going to be playing in the nickel. We have a really great set of guys here. Khalil Mack. Jordan Hicks is going to be great on special teams, and he'll come in on occasion. We are in a golden position here, and um, simulate straight to the midseason. Season number three, we need Pat Mahomes to develop. That's the biggest thing that's going to take us from a B-level team to an A-level team. Six and one at the midseason mark. Killing it. But still, the Chargers, it's just unreal and sim, are also 6-1. and one. I can guarantee you their team looks nothing like ours does. Tyree kills our top free agent. Who else is here? DeForest Buckner, Chris Jones, Jack Conklin, Reggie Ragland. Those are five that we need to return. Well, I guess Reggie Ragland not necessarily, but like I do want to bring him back. All right, I just spent a lot of money on Chris Jones and DeForest Buckner. They're making a lot of money. We're kind of low on uh, salary cap room, which happens from time to time. Usually it doesn't get too bad uh, with the tie by time everything. But um, in this case, I guess we're going to the playoffs as well. Jesus. Um, but uh, usually it doesn't get too bad. But I think we're going to be under 10 mil in cap space, which isn't the worst thing. But um, it's not great. You'd like to have a little bit of leeway in order to make the moves that you want to do. But with Khalil Mack and now with the Forrest Buckner and Chris Jones all demanding huge deals... As we're in the wild card at 12 and 4, the Chargers also went 12 and 4. I'm going to be sick. Unbelievable. So we're in the playoffs at least. Don't really have to worry about team building much at this point. That's Patrick Mahomes. Uh, very interesting season. 4,600 yards passing, which is great. 32 touchdowns, which is okay. And then 24 picks is not good. Rushing, Kareem Hunt, 1,100 yards, nearly 1,200. 14 touchdowns, average 4 on the ground. 
um, for carry. Tyree Kill, almost 1,300 yards, 10 TDs on 86 catches. 85 catches for Thomas Bynes, 824 yards, 8 touchdowns. 1,000 yards for Travis Kelsey, 7 TDs. Rest somewhat insignificant, 800 yards, though, for Taurus, whatever his last name is. Isn't bad, though. Reggie Ragland led our team in tackles with 135. Tuplin Smith had 124. Tackles for loss, 18 from J.J. Watt, 13 from Chris Jones. Quarterback sacks, four double-digit sacks for t our team. Unreal. I wonder when the last time that happened in the NFL, if it's ever happened, which I'm not sure that it has. I'm not sure that it hasn't, but that's a ridiculous amount. Four, that's crazy. Justin Houston leads a pack with 17 and a half. How many did Khalil Mack have? He had one and a half. I feel like he's being... Uh, not utilized the best. How many tackles did he have? He even have a lot of tackles? 41. He's not playing that much, probably. How many downs did he play? I mean, we'll see. Um, interceptions. We have four for Telvin Smith and Marcus Peters and Eric Berry, two for Lee Hooker and Gregory Holmes. Any for the rookie Christian O'Neill? One. Force fumbles. How many? Three from DeForest Buckner. He also had two recoveries. Both led the team. And then defensive touchdowns. Do we have any? No. A block for Eric Berry. Show me downs played for Khalil Mack, though. It should be around 1,100. 366. It's because he's playing at left outside linebacker. Probably going to switch him and Telvin Smith. I almost forgot about awards. Not that we won anything, but I don't know. AJ McCarron's MVP. On what planet? AFC Office Player of the Year's Phillip Rivers somehow. I hate the fucking Chargers, dude. Uh, defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. Good to see from him and the Browns. The Browns go 8-8. Eight eight. Reggie Ragland in there at number 7. Telvin Smith at number 9. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Dixon McKinney. No Chiefs. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Ben Cecil. Christian O'Neal in there at number 5. All right, so the team is upgraded. Patty Mahomes is up to an 88 with confidence. Started working on accuracy a little bit more. We've uh, not touched awareness in a while, so things will come. He's getting better. Defensively, though, I need you guys to see Colin O'Neill. Christian O'Neill. Colin O'Neill is like his brother. He doesn't play. But Christian O'Neill is who I really want you guys to see. He's up to an 88. That's going to move him up in the depth chart to cornerback number two. Uh, maybe next year. Not now because uh, we're mid-season in the playoffs. It's a team that got us to the playoffs. Going 12-4. and four. We're not going to change it now. But can we beat the Tennessee Titans here in year number three to advance to the divisional round of the playoffs? N of course not. <laughs> Why would we? See, in the offseason, year number four, that's when things happen. Yeah, we have four million in cap space, so I definitely can't go out and sign a Deion Jones. Not that like I kind of want to. Can't afford it. This is the most I can offer him, and it's not even, it's not even close. Uh, so I don't want Deion Jones necessarily. Who would I even want? I don't think anybody. Wrong. I want a kicker. In this case, a punter. I just slandered the name of the brand with a punter. Um, but no, I would I would gladly take a Matt Bosher. And he accepts to potentially win a Super Bowl in Kansas City. And uh, we are missing some backups in a big way. We have no backups at all. We need defensive line backups so badly. We're fine at uh, linebacker. Offensive line, we're fine. We have no defensive line backups at all. All right, we're in the draft. We don't really have much to improve. I'm just basically going to draft for defensive line depth. And if we can pick up some really cool players in the process, hey, all the more power to me. Um, top guys I've watched are these guys. So I might as well just start taking them. Dominic Trent. 73 overall, quick development. He's supposed to go in the in the second. Uh, he's a good player, so whatever. I don't really care about reaches at this point because uh, he's, they're not going to play anyway. There is no player, and I repeat, there is no player that I would drop that might play. Just there isn't anybody. This is the squad. We could improve at right guard, but I think Laurent duvernay Tardif is going to stay on the squad, even though he's regressing because he's getting older. Whatever, I'm not worried about it. Um, it is clearly the one weak spot on our team. It's going to have to do, and we could use an upgraded receiver. I might actually try and trade for a wide receiver, like a really good one. I'm not sure. Defensively, we're solid. If I could trade Jordan Hicks for a receiver, though, I might do that. 
Yeah, that might be on the docket. Christian O'Neal's going to start, too. Trading Jordan Hicks a 1 and a 3 for Sammy Watkins. Someone that I don't get particularly often. So I uh, figure would add him to the team. And uh, he'll be a decent option at wide receiver for Patty Mahomes. I like that. Now we have a really good group of receivers. Really good group. And uh, I think next... I don't, like, want to have to trade Laurent duvernay Tardif, but he's just not that good anymore. Um, and we need someone better to finally get out of a one playoff game. And we don't have... We're in negative 160 cap. How are we even operating? How are we allowed to make that last trade? All right, Laurent duvernay Tardif and a fifth gets me Dan Feeney. I, like, that shouldn't ever happen, but, you know, it is mad we're talking about. Uh, ridiculous stuff happens all the time. So basically, what we've done is by taking Forrest Lamp and now Dan Feeney, we're making the Chargers worse. I almost traded for Keenan Allen. We couldn't even come close to affording it, so I couldn't do that. But uh, we're trying to make the Chargers worse at the same time getting better. I will see you guys at the midseason mark. Hopefully Project Destroy the Chargers comes to full fruition. The plan works out, and we actually are successful and make and win in the playoffs. Seven and one at the midseason mark. Travis Kelsey's a free agent. I'm not even gonna worry about it. The Chargers are four and three. The Raiders are 0-7. And, and the Broncos are one and seven. Let's see how badly we beat them in the regular season. Because that is ridiculous. Hold on. Alright, regular season. Beat the Jags 31-3. Broncos barely. Raiders barely. Chargers barely. Oh my goodness. Lost the Jets. That's that's our one loss. We were undefeated until losing to the Jets by a touchdown. Unreal. I'm not going to bother upgrading anyone. We'll get to it at the end of the season. Simulating now to the playoffs. I don't think there's any chance we don't make the playoffs after starting 7-1. and one. So, uh, good luck to me. Yep, first round bye. I like it. 14-2. and two. This Chargers come back to you at 13-3. Like, I'm telling you. The Chargers are another thing in simulation. As Pat Mahomes has his best uh, season of his career. 4,441 yards, 37 touchdowns, only 8 picks. Rushing, Kareem Hunt, 1,200 yards, 11 TDs. Thailand Foster had 12. Receiving, only one 1,000-yard receiver, and that's Tyree Kill. 9 touchdowns for Sammy Watkins, though, as he was very close to 100 catches and 1,000 yards. 8 touchdowns for Thomas Bynes. 7 for Travis Kelsey, blocking Offensive line did very, very well. Defensively, Reggie Ragland led our team in tackles with 130. Tackles for loss, 16 from J.J. Watt, 12 from DeForest Buckner, 9 from Chris Jones. And quarterback sacks, 19.5 for J.J. Watt, 13.5 for DeForest Buckner, 10.5 for Chris Jones. Justin Houston, 9. Again, almost four guys with double-digit sacks. As Eric Berry has five picks, three for Marcus Peters, three for Christian O'Neal in his new starting role. I guess he probably played a lot. Uh, in the nickel, but two for Malik Hooker. Damn, where's Khalil Mack in any of this? Force fumbles, three for DeForest Buckner, two for a handful of players. Fumble recoveries, we have two from Justin Houston. Defensive touchdowns, one from Eric Berry and one from Christian O'Neal. Six foot three, he is what, 97 speed? Yeah, unbelievable player. Khalil Mack, 117 tackles, five and a half sacks and a pick. That's a really good season. Tackle for loss as well. Awards. Matt Stafford wins MVP. Pat Mahomes in there at number three. Now with their Chiefs. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Blake Bortles. Robbie Blake Bortles. Pat Mahomes in there at number two. This is this is weird. Um like this guy, 80 overall rookie for the Chargers. I bet that's a soft G. Jizzy! Logan Jizzy. 80 overall, and he is up there. As J.J. Watt wins Defensive Player of the Year, then two Chargers, then Reggie Ragland at number four. Obviously, Melvin Ingram, Joey Bosa. I don't know why they call them two Chargers. Cleo Mack at seven. DeForest Buckner at nine. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Jason Hansen. That name sounds familiar. Uh, and then Offensive, excuse me, Defensive Rookie of the Year, Alan Zukowskis. One Chief in there is Dominic Trent, the defensive end we drafted in the first. All right, so we got a first-round bye. Finally. And who will we face in the divisional but oh it's the eight and eight browns i thought it'd be the chargers for sure we actually might have a chance unless they probably have first round by two if they finish second in the conference 
and uh, we might see them in the conference championship because we are beating the Browns in the divisional. But I am upgrading first, and we're going in with a full head of steam if the Browns win. <laughs> sim sim is rigged. I mean, it already is, but even more so. This is the upgraded team for the playoffs. It looks unbelievable. I think I said in my last video that we did for a rebuild, which was the Detroit Lions. That was the best offensive line I've ever had. This one is rivaling it for sure. Um, and uh, again, I think this is a very solid team. We're never not going to build a solid team here when we have, you know, everything at our disposal. Defensive line sick. Christian O'Neal is unreal. When we revisit this rebuild, it's going to be so much fun to see him out there on the field. Six foot three with 97 speed. And this is only his, uh, his second season. So big things. Can we beat the Browns to advance to the conference championship? I want the Chargers. Fuck, you're kidding me, dude. It's an absolute joke, simulation is. It's an absolute joke. The 8-8 eight and eight Browns. Give me a fucking break, dude. Browns, Jaguars? Lost by a fucking field goal. You're kidding me. Oh, you're kidding me. They came back in the fourth. That's a game-winning field goal, I can already tell. Let's see. Pat Mahomes threw two picks. I don't even know who the fuck Malcolm Berry is, but he came out and he threw a five-yard touchdown. <laughs> we sacked Deshaun Kaiser twice. He didn't even throw a touchdown. Rushing Kareem Hunt. Didn't get in the end zone. Duke Johnson scored twice. Thailand Foster fumbled. Oh, my God. What is this game? How is he even getting a carry? Defensively, who sacked him? Chris Jones, DeForest Buckner, Khalil Mack. No. J.J. Watt, Miles Garrett. Gets one for them. Interceptions, two from Nick Kwiatkowski. He's going to get two picks. Malik Hooker with one. What is your zone coverage? Can I not even click on you from here? Unbelievable. Unbelievable that this ends like this. The 8-8 eight and eight Cleveland Browns are going to be with dethroned the 14-2 and two Chiefs who never make it to the conference championship. <laughs> and I say buy fucking tickets. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed regardless of the result. And I will see you in the next one. What's going on, guys? Bengal here. This shit don't run well.